is my absolute pleasure to invite our speaker this morning, Reverend Dr. Sonia Davidson. She is like a wonderful, you know, a starlight. Remember when we were little and we had starlights? She's like the, that spark of light that just emanates and touches and blesses so many of us. My friends, please put your hands together and welcome Reverend Dr. Sonia Davidson. Thank you, Tony. Ah, it's lovely up here. <laughs> It sure is lovely up here. Good morning, good morning, everyone. May I add my own words of welcome to you who are in the sanctuary, but also to those persons who have chose to join us on the World Wide Web. To them, I say, welcome to this big, big country on the little, little island. This is the words I'm quoting of an American, Jamaican, a big country on a small island. Wow, I have been thinking a lot. I've been thinking a lot about trust. Trust is mentioned, I'm told, over 150 times in the Bible. All the scriptures are filled with stories which are examples of trust in seemingly extreme circumstances. Trust is important to human well-being. Trust is the glue that holds the human race together. This has never been more apparent in my lifetime than it is now when people are depending on each other to conform to standard protocol for COVID safety, when it is necessary to trust that the protocol is based on sound scientific principles. Trust is the glue in all relationships. It is that which causes armies and countries to follow leaders. We were born to trust? Yes, to trust. Just look into the eyes of a newborn baby. What do you see? Unfiltered trust. Have you ever marveled at a woman clinging to a man who's riding a motorbike at full speed while she's just holding on to nothing but the man's back? Who incidentally may not even have on a helmet? <laughs> trust. Have you ever watched a small child shriek in the light as a little body is tossed high in the air by a playful father? Trust. Research has shown that this type of interaction between father and child is necessary for human development because it cements trust into the psyche. Recently, I was so impressed by a beautiful image of trust that someone shared on the internet. Forgive me if I take a little time to describe it. It is so alive in my mind as it touched me deeply. In fact, it is an entire sermon. Let me describe for you what I saw. There is this man riding on a bicycle it seemed like it was early morning. A child about five years old was sitting on his shoulders as he rode. She is fully dressed in her school uniform, including a back, bag strapped to her back. But this is not all. The man's head was stacked with three thin books and resting on the books was the head of little child who was fast asleep as they rode along, I was moved almost to tears by the many messages in that one image. The one, however, that lingers in my mind most is trust with a capital T. The father trusted himself to carry his precious cargo safely and the child in absolute trust fell asleep deeply 
while he was doing so, trust. Trust is inborn, but is whittled away as many experiences of life may lead to disappointment and sometimes failure. Trust of people doesn't always work out to our advantage, and we learn from the disappointments to be wary of similar circumstances. We may have failed at something we thought we were good at and lost some trust in our ability to succeed. Trust may fade away and loosen the bond in relationships as a consequence of disloyalty. Failure of one party may be the cause, just failure to be confidential, nothing else. But often in a relationship, when trust breaks down, we find that one party may be projecting their own insecurities on the other without taking responsibility for their role. Such as an attitude, such an attitude is a barrier to trust. Over a lifetime, we learn to limit our trust to specific circumstances, conditions, and people. However, in times of great need, we are called on to dig deep inside and bring out that trust from where it is buried and put it to work. Hmm. I had a wake up call about trust a few weeks ago and again a few days ago. At the last after church discussion, which is called Discovery, and we're gonna have one today, Reverend John Scott, who was facilitating the session, asked the audience to think of something they wanted to be emancipated I sat for a while, quite a while, in deep thought, trying to come up with something, anything. The answer didn't come readily to me, perhaps because I think of myself as quite a free spirit. But then it came. You can only feel comfortable when you are driving a car yourself and not when others are driving you. Huh. The answer came with a strong message you lack trust. It is not the driver who you should rely on. It is an intelligence within the driver. The universe will protect you if you let it. Fear is that sneaky fella lurking behind each attitude of distrust. It is important that we neutralize distrust lest it becomes a millstone around our psychological neck and a handicap to our spiritual growth. Distrust is fear disguised. It is not always apparent as such because often it is projected on other people rather than seeing it as part of our own journey towards learning to love more fully and to trust more deeply by turning inward even more deeply. As for me and my house, I will trust the Lord. The universe is forever tossing lessons at me in which I have to prove to myself that I mean what I'm planning to say. In truth, I, let me just explain something. I trust my son-in-law deeply. He's a great father and a very disciplined man. I had initial concerns about a plan he had to take his daughter, my granddaughter, to a hotel for a few days. However, I eventually let go of these concerns. I never gave it a backward thought. On the day they were intended to return, my daughter, her mother, gave a casual call just to check on the time of their delivery, of their return delivery, only to find that her husband's phone failed to ring. It just didn't ring, it just went, not even to voicemail. voicemail. This was so unlike him, as his phone was always well charged and answered at once. Nothing was thought of it at first, but when repeated calls bore no answer, and no one had seen him check out at the front desk, although the system, the computer system at the hotel said he had checked out at 4.30. This became, we begot, 
became very curious. 14 hours passed and still no sign or contact made by phone by anyone. It could have been a nail-biting experience, but I heard the voice of our dear Dr. Elma Lumsden, our teacher and founder of the Temple of Light. I heard it very clearly as if it was yesterday that she spoke these words. Some of you have heard me share it before. Memorable, because there's only eight words, but a sermon as she waited for her transition. The words, find your point of peace and stay there. I found my point of peace and never wavered throughout the 14 hours even as we did everything possible to verify their safety. My point of peace was channeled through the words of Proverbs 3 verses 5 to 6. Trust in the Lord with all thy might and lean not unto your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. Everybody can find their own point of peace, the vehicle that takes you to that point of peace. In that moment, that was mine, because that is a verse I love so dearly. The conclusion of this saga, there was a perfectly rational reason for us not contacting them. And some of these reasons came to me intuitively and I just brushed them off. My son-in-law's phone had fallen into water and was not functional. And along the highway, there are internet dead zones which prevented calls from reaching my granddaughter's phone at the times when we had tried to call her. They arrived home, there she is, safe and sound and joyful. After a great holiday, Meanwhile, we had spent an entire day attempting to find them instead of taking care of our own business. Trust. The universe was teaching us a lesson and we learned it. Find your point of peace and stay there. The last words of our beloved Dr. Elma Lumsden, who was serenely and trustingly seeing and accepting the time of her exit from this earth life. Find your point of peace, whatever it may be, a word, a verse, a memory, or just an inward directed attention. One is one never, is never free, free until one, one has one learned to regain the trust of, of the little child, child, child with which, which this child, child that, that came, came with a trust on this on earth, earth plane. When we, when we trust ourselves, we are more inclined to trust others, others because, because that trust we have for ourselves comes from deep within. It is from the spirit of God within us, which says, I am the Lord thy God. And beside me, there is no other. None to fear, only God to know. Trust which comes with knowing that we and every other self are from and of the one self, which takes care of all the details of our life, if we let it. Does it mean that we don't lock our doors? Of course not, unless you feel completely secure in not doing so. If you do, then don't. Should you not check your change when you have given it, been given it by the cashier? I don't. It depends entirely on where you are in trust. Remember the trust you remember to trust. You need not worry when you're in a relationship if you trust. You have the indwelling God. You trust yourself. You trust the love that radiates from you and trust that that love will be the glue which binds your relationship together. 
there is no greater trust than, one, than the one which comes from evidence. And where does the evidence come from? Each prayer answered strengthens our trust in the value and infallibility of prayer. Each time we turn our attention inward and Godward, we are rewarded with the answer and our trust strengthens. Trust in the Lord with all their heart and lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Trust is freedom. Trust is the antidote for fear. But how to find trust when a situation seems impossible? What if a situation I want to change seems out of my control? What if I feel so overwhelmed that I can't seem to think clearly? What if something terrible I think is happening? What if, what if? I have learned ever so gradually to put the what ifs behind by learning to trust. There again, Proverbs 3 verses 5 to 6. Dr. Ernest Holmes was asked this question. I have an objective as to what I want to be, but I cannot form a definite objective for what I ought to do. I have multitude of things before me I might try to do, but cannot settle on the one thing I should do. How can I overcome this confusion? I chose this question out of many in the question and answers in the science of mind because I have found so many people in this dilemma. So, he says, I know, since you cannot choose one activity over the others, give the problem to mind. Say something like this. I know that the divine mind within me knows what particular work is for me to do. It knows the right activity to bring about the objective. I rely on it to open the way, to show me the sign that points to the right direction. I realize this divine guidance is within me now and that that activity works through me and cannot be withheld from my affairs. And then he goes on. He says, watch for the sign. Listen greatly to yourself. Often the harvest of the seed we have sown is born to us from unexpected sources channels. Your word thus spoken deals with the perfect law and this law guides, directs, and governs you and is liberty and freedom and brings success and happiness unto you. The certainty, unquote, the certainty of God's presence of good must become your dominant thought. Because he had set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. Psalm 91, verse 14. So let us go, let go of the need to make things happen and in trust allow them to happen. If it is difficult, you're off track. Start again by going back within. Remind yourself that that which keeps the planets in the course, in their course, is that, that which makes the sun to rise and the moon to shine, which created your body and all things. It made you and is acting through you in all that you do. Trust that this is so and prove it. Commit to the results you want. Commitment requires trust. Expect the best. Avoid the stress of contemplating any situation you're seeking to move away from. Instead, contemplate your destination as joyful, peaceful, fulfilling outcome. Persist at it with the certainty that there's a law of mind supporting you as certainly as there is a law supporting a large ship which stays afloat on an ocean. 
The great Chinese philosopher Lao Tzu, founder of Taoism, tells us, he who controls ours, others may be powerful. He who has mastered himself is mightier still. And always we have to trust ourselves and our ability to accomplish, and no one will dare to say we can't. Nowhere can a man find a quieter or more untroubled retreat than in his own soul, wrote the Roman thinker and former army general, Marcus Aurelius. As I end this encouragement, I want to share with you Gerald Goldsmith's key, he says, to self-knowing. He says, awake every morning with the first thought on God. Declare, he says, as the wave is one with the ocean, so am I one with God. As the wave is one with the ocean, so am I one with God. Imagine yourself as a wave in an infinite ocean of Godness. Then he says also, as the sunbeam is one with the sun, so am I one with God. Imagine that. And so, I am going to share with you the words. I'm not going to sing it. I'm going to recite it. I'm going to say it. Of a beautiful song. And let this be a constant remind, my, reminder of our trust in God. If you know it, you can say it with me. Through the love of God our Father, all will be well. Free and changeless is his favor. And all is well. Gloriously his love revealed us. Patiently his truth has healed us. Ever shall his power shield us. And all is well. Seeing now a bright tomorrow, all will be well. Faith can sing through days of sorrow. And all is well. Joyfully in mind confiding, ever finding God confiding, his responsive spirit guiding, all now is well. May you always walk this earth plane in the certain assurance that you abide always under the shadow of the Almighty and all is well. Namaste.